Welcome to Houseplant Tips by the Houseplant Guy. Join me as we go through the ABCs of everything houseplants. Today we're going to be talking about managing houseplant pests, diseases, and poor growing conditions. Plants are susceptible to pests and diseases just like other living things. When they are grown under optimal conditions and receive proper care, they tend to be healthy and are more likely to resist or survive attacks from pests and diseases. It is important to spend time observing your plants to notice any signs of stress because the earlier you identify problems, the easier it would be to treat them. Knowing where pests and diseases come from is the first step in controlling them or avoiding an attack. Sometimes when we first obtain a houseplant, either as a purchase or a gift, we are unaware that they are already infested with pests and diseases. You should thoroughly inspect a plant's condition and look for any signs of trouble. This could be symptoms such as heavy leaf drop, yellowing or discolored leaves, or a general unhealthy appearance. Observe different parts of the plants, like the growing tips, along the stems, and on both the upper and lower surfaces of leaves. Look for anything unusual. Bugs are sometimes very tiny and difficult to see with the naked eye. Besides this, they are often camouflaged, which makes them even harder to see. On the other hand, some bugs are easy to identify as they are quite distinct. If you don't observe any bugs themselves, then look for signs of their activity as you learn more about them. There are several pests that attack houseplants and I will review seven of the main ones today. The first one is an insect called a fungus gnat. This is actually not very harmful to most plants, but they can transmit some plant diseases. They are one of the biggest nuisances of homes with houseplants. Fungus gnats are very small, wispy looking insects that live part of their life cycle in the potting soil. At the immature stage, they feed on the organic matter found in the potting soil, and when they emerge as winged adults, they fly around the room. When the population is very high, you will often notice them literally bugging you by flying around your face, or during darkness, flying into the screens of your mobile devices. To control the adults, you can purchase yellow sticky traps, which will help reduce their population. The problem often occurs when plants are freshly transplanted into potting soil rich in organic matter, or when plants that have been kept outdoors during warm weather are brought indoors. Thrips are an insect pest that damages the leaf surface. They are commonly found in greenhouses, but can also attack houseplants. They are tiny and slender, and range in color from yellow to brown or black. When disturbed, they leap or fly away, which makes them harder to control. You can identify them by shaking an infected plant over a white background, and you will see them more easily. They look like minute lobsters. To control their population, use yellow sticky traps similar to the ones used for fungus gnats. The following three pests are soft-bodied insects that attach themselves and feed on leaves and stems. They are aphids, mealybugs, and brown scale insects. They suck the sap or juices from the plants and excrete a very sticky substance called honeydew. One of the first signs of their activity is the stickiness felt on leaves, stems, and even on surfaces around the plant, like the plant pot or even on the floor. Aphids are usually greenish in color and found feeding on the growing tips of plants. They appear as groups with visible adults and young. Next are mealybugs, which look like white cockney or waxy insects that feed on leaves and branches. Adult mealybugs are immobile and very noticeable, but the tiny young called crawlers are hard to see. They do move around and spread out to other parts of the plant. Brown scale insects are cousins to mealybugs and are found in similar feeding areas. The adults are also immobile and appear as brown scaly bumps along the stems and leaves. The young are called crawlers just as mealybugs and are hard to see but also move about the plant. Both mealybugs and brown scale insects appear like cushion-like masses that can be scraped off with your fingernails. Another noticeable pest is called white flies. As the name suggests, it is a small white colored flying insect that feeds mainly on the underside of leaves. They are most easily observed when the leaves are suddenly shaken or disturbed. They will fly around briefly before returning to the plant to continue feeding. 
white flies also excrete the sticky substance called honeydew. Another commonly seen pest is called spider mites. They are actually more closely related to spiders and may be more noticeable on the undersides of leaves. They are often hard to see, but if an infected leaf or branch is swatted against white paper or a white background, they can be more easily seen. You will see green, red or yellow specks crawling around. Besides the leaf damage that will be observed, a common sign of spider mite activity is webbing similar to spider webbing. The webbing connects adjacent leaves and stems. The surface of leaves also appear dirty with dusty specks. These five pests, aphids, mealybugs, brown scale insects, white flies and spider mites can be eradicated using a pesticide spray called insecticidal soap. This is relatively safe and not very toxic. Insecticidal soap are available as ready to use sprays but can also be purchased as concentrates. Concentrates must be diluted in water according to instructions before using. All pesticides must be handled with care and used as directed. Sometimes, in order to properly control a pest, you may have to spray weekly over a short period of time until they are no longer visible. It's important when spraying a plant that all visible surfaces be sprayed thoroughly for complete coverage. This includes the underside of leaves and also stems. Spray until the plant is completely wet. Mealybugs and brown scale insects are particularly difficult to control as their waxy masses act as a protective barrier for the adult stage and these insects often require multiple sprayings to successfully control their population. To accelerate the process to eradicate them, you can use a cotton swab dipped in rubbing alcohol and physically remove the waxy masses from the plant. The alcohol will kill the adults and their eggs. Besides insecticidal soap, there are other relatively safe pesticide sprays that contain active ingredients derived from natural sources or synthetically made ones that imitate them. One of these active ingredients is called pyrethrin, which is derived from the chrysanthemum plant. Some other pesticides are formulated with neem oil, which is derived from the neem tree. Brands of pesticides containing these active ingredients are normally lower in toxicity compared to others and can be used to eradicate many of these pests. They must however be used with caution, kept stored away safely from pets and children. Plant diseases may be caused by various organisms such as fungus, bacteria and viruses that are often difficult to diagnose. Some plants are more susceptible to certain diseases and the symptoms of diseases may affect different parts of a plant. Diseases tend to affect plants that are already growing under poor or unsuitable growing conditions. To identify diseases, examine leaves and stems carefully for symptoms such as spotting, lesions and discoloration or a general appearance of poor growth. Any leaves or plant parts that appear diseased should be carefully removed and discarded. These plant parts should be kept away from other parts of the plant to prevent disease spread and should not be used for making compost. Some diseases may affect a plant's root system which may not be obvious at first. However, diseased roots usually results in overall poor growth. Some plant species may appear stunted with wilted and dying leaves. Ensure plants are not being overwatered and that excess water is being drained away. Assess the plant's growing conditions using the plant's guide in this series to determine whether any conditions could be improved to promote healthy plant growth. This is part of the plant's guide video series. Please check all the videos in this series to get more information on the plant's guide. Remember to like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos. Also check the links to my Facebook page and Instagram in the video description below. Thanks for watching Houseplant Tips by the Houseplant Guy and see you again.